Welcome to King Says So, a channel that advocates for one Africa, one land, one Africa, one language, one Africa, one currency, one Africa, one army. I wish to witness Africans all around the world united as one in our lifetime. Enjoy. What's up, ladies and gentlemen? It's your boy King King053, Mr. Easy Imali Enengi Nengi, and we back at it again with the was a very sensitive topic that white media wants us to forget. Kathim Sasana from ENCA interviewing Floyd Shibango. And Floyd was explaining to, to, to Kathy what an African is. And I understand when we get lost in the terminology of what an African is. And let me tell you, it's not the same everywhere in Africa like it is in South Africa. I, or in most African countries, the indigenous people of that country are black. But in the, uh, when we're talking about uh, migrating and immigration and all that, other races have came into our land, such as Indians, um, such as the Dutch, such as the Chinese, such as um, uh, you name them, different people that are not black came to Africa. And then their children were then born in Africa and now consider themselves as Africans because of generation of generation of generation uh, being passed and being born here in Africa, in South Africa in particular. So Floyd is explaining to Kathy, who is now confused, who does not know what qualifies a person to be African. I want to also break this thing down for you guys so that you guys can understand clearly when we say um, Africans, who are we speaking about? Let's just quickly listen to the beautiful articulation from Floyd Shibango and, and then come back for a review. Look, he's not a of African descent in the, in, the, in the broader context of blacks in general and Africans in particular. What, what qualifies when, when, somebody when, to be African in, when, in, when in he your feels, view? When Ismail Momonite feels the Uma first form to get an ID, in the four spaces there where he has to tick one, he ticks Indian. So as a matter of fact, there's an option for African, white, Indian, colored, but he ticks Indian day. He was a member of the Indian Transvaal Congress himself, not, not me, who said he must be part of that. He was part of the Indian cabal in the 1980s. That was micromanaging the mass democratic movement. So we must not, we must not tiptoe around this question that they are South Africans of Indian descent. They are all South Africans. We welcome them, we work together, we live together. We are, this country belongs to all of us. But we must raise the issue that why is it that the indigenous African population is undermined in economic cluster, and that is the issue that unapologetically we are raising, and so we have does, raised so, in the So community. does it not matter that under apartheid, even being Indian, he would have been classified as a black? Does that not matter to you? It, 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 does it, it doesn't work like that. Like it's the categorization in how South does Africa, it work? in terms of, Please explain in to terms me. of how categorization, does it work? in South Africa, there is categorization of different people, which is a reality, right? And the levels of oppression and, and exclusion. That defines the African majority. It's not the same that defined the black majority. That is why the liberation struggle historically had said that the purpose of the liberation struggle is to emancipate blacks in general and Africans in particular because Africans suffered the most. There were not even concessions in 1983 when the tricameral tri parliament was, was created to accommodate Indian community and the colored community. Black people had been oppressed and most exploited. That is why we accept as a, those people who are fighting for total emancipation that the primary end of the liberation, even the economic liberation struggle, should be emancipation of the Africans in particular. So we cannot tiptoe around that particular aspect and then, and then, and then turn a blind eye so, so, when so, Africans so, are being so, undermined. So, 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 so when you say Africans are being undermined, are you, who are you referring to? I'm referring to all Africans that are in national treasury because they are not playing any significant role. It's only one individual. Are you referring individual. to black Africans? I'm, I'm referring to black Africans that are in the, in the national treasury, like those who have ticked African when they applied for the ID uh, in home affairs. The first question that uh, Kathy asked was a lengthy interview. I just gave you guys a snippet. 
She says, what qualifies you to be an African? Beautiful. And listen to the simple answer that Floyd gave him. When you go to home affairs, any home affairs in the world, there is a category of race that you must tick there. Usually, in South Africa, it will say African. That will be the first one. Then it will say white. Then it will say Indian. Then it will say um, colored. In other countries, you can say mixed race or whatever. I don't know. And then it will say uh, Chinese. And then it throws the other people on the other. It, it says other, and then it will, it, it, will, it will ask you to specify what do you mean by other. If you are not part of Chinese, white, African, uh, Indian, uh, and colored, what are you? Specify there underneath other. I'll try to get the form for you guys and put it here. That is why I was fighting about this thing of Trikas Duplessis and, and um, Israel Andersana. Israel, African black men born in Nigeria, living overseas. Drikas Duplessis came, his ancestors came to South Africa via a ship. They are not originally indigenous to the land. But today, Drikas Duplessis feels like he can tell Israel that you are not African because Israel is not living in Africa. And I'm not here to speak about that because I've spoken length and length and length. I even got you guys a clip from Shaka Zulu who explained the movie Shaka Zulu, who explained this thing properly. Once we get into any policy making, once we get into any decision making as a country, as a government, and we don't take um, to head, we don't, we don't consider the, the in historical injustice that have happened, we are going to continue to disadvantage Africans. When I'm speaking about Africans, I'm speaking about everyone on that form that ticked African. If you tick anything else, I don't care. You are not African. So if you are African, why are you not ticking African there? Because these forms are a form of racism. They want to see where these African people stay, how many African people have applied for a job and everything. And in the past, they will take that, that statistics and they will show why people, listen, Africans stay here and not here, move to this place. That place has got less Africans, it's got more Indians, it's got more uh, whatever. That's how they would use this form to, 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 racially discriminate against people but not knowing that one day it will work against them that day is today why is it that when white people want to play the african card they are they are free to do so but on the form where it matters the most they take white they always knew that they are not africans and they cannot pretend to be africans they know they are not Africans. And in this channel, I have people, you know, I meet people and, and I know my job is to educate people, uh, especially African brothers and sisters, to educate them, to say, listen, guys, no, no, no. This is how it, things are. But sometimes you meet African brothers and sisters that are just ignorant as to what is happening around them. They don't want, you can show them the truth as much as you want. They don't want to. When I speak about one Africa, one language, they don't want to hear that story. But everyone is happy to speak English and language that does not originate from Africa, anywhere in Africa. But we are all happy to speak English so that we can communicate. It was not easy for English to infiltrate the whole world to speak. It took years. So the earlier we start here in Africa, the sooner we can get to the end goal. In fact, we will do it faster because it will, we will not be enslaving people and forcing them. It will be done in parliament to say, in Africa, let's, let's all learn Kiswahili. Let's all learn how to greet and carry a basic conversation 
in Swahili. For example, I'm just making an example. We can choose many other languages that are in Africa. We can even put um, people that study languages in one in one in one room and give them a year to come up with a new language, mixing the different African languages and terminologies and everything, and coming up with a beautiful language. We can do that, but because we are conditioned of of thinking this the system has taught us that we Africans are not good enough to have our own. Nobody or very few people believe in that. Do you believe in one Africa, one language, one Africa, one currency, and one Africa with one army? A strong army that will be the strongest army in the whole world. Do you believe in that or are you just happy with the division that we Africans have amongst each other? Because we are really not fighting anyone else. We're fighting ourselves here, ladies and gentlemen. The disbelief is in our culture. It was, in, it was injected in us through slavery to make us feel that we are not good enough. And today when you have people like myself that, that is trying to wake up the African spirit, you say, Africans, wake up. Africans, wake up, love each other. Africans, what is this nonsense of xenophobia? Africans, if a, Zim a Zimbabwean brother is running from his country because of the economical situation and is this side, help each other. Africans, when a, a, an African brother from Nigeria leaves Nigeria, comes to South Africa and he's, he's, he's just a barber, Leaving his family, his aunt is dying, his children are dying, his family, he can't leave South Africa because he does not have the funds to go that side. Do you think he is happy to be here? You are making it worse by killing him, calling him Lulekwere Kwere and all other names. As a refugee in South Africa, he is suffering. His whole family is in a foreign, in another country. He's in a foreign land. But we as Africans, we don't, we, we don't, we don't have that Ubuntu spirit, the, the Bantu spirit amongst ourselves anymore because we were taught that the white person who comes from Zimbabwe is different from a, 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 a black person coming from Zimbabwe. We don't even ask or question white people, where do you come from anymore? We don't question them anymore. We only question our African brothers and sisters. Not only questioning them, we kill them. We tell them, go back where you're coming from. As if they came here by, by, uh, for, for a nice time. They're hustling. Those who came here legally so, professional nurses, doctors, teachers, engineers, and we still discriminate against them. We say they are stealing our jobs. What is it that we want? Do you want South Africa to be only to South Africans? Then let's start with the white people. Let them go. Leave these African brothers alone. Start with the white people. If you want Africa, South Africa to be only for white, for, for African and South African people, the genuine um, indigenous African people, start with the white people. Why can't you start with them? Because you know. They will stand together and they will shoot your black ass. And then if you do that, sanctions will come from other white countries, sanctioning you guys from, for, for killing white people, just like they dealt with Zimbabwe and many other African countries. For taking back land, sanctions will come upon your, your country. That's why you don't find any more brave African leaders. Don't find them anymore. Very few. We can count five in Sarah, in the whole of Africa. We can fi count five: Kenya, Rwanda, and um, Uganda. We can count how many brave presidents do we do we have? Do we have who are pro-African? And they vocalize it and they tell the, 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 the U.S. and the Western countries that we as Africans do what is best for Africa. Very few. Now you have our poor sister Kathy, um, whatever her name is, you know, 
trying by all means to say no indians were also uh, uh, discriminated like blacks in the in in up no no way in the whole world do indians get the same treatment as black people no way in the past in the current present and in the future it will never happen we are treated differently in any system, whether you are at school, whether you are at home affairs, whether you are in prison, wherever you are as a black person, you will always receive the short end of the stick. I'm very excited to tell you guys I've done my first interview with a chartered accountant in South Africa by the name of uh, Sichaba Tole, who owns an accounting firm, uh, Tole uh, Chartered Accountants. I've done the beautiful interview with a guy, gave me insight financially, spoke about his private life, spoke about politics, spoke about God, religion, and everything, spoke about um, Africanism, Pan-Africanism, and everything. I am 100% sure you guys are going to enjoy that interview. It's going to be dropping on um, the 1st or 2nd of, of August because um, I'll be too busy to be editing and all of that. And um, I'm, I can't wait to share this interview for you guys. The first, first interview that I've done in my channel. Very excited and proud of myself for reaching that milestone. So before that interview come out, please make me a favor. Do a favor for me and click the subscribe button if you have not uh, clicked it yet. I'm telling you guys, this channel, we're going places. We're going places. That's all I'm going to say to you guys. Thank you so much for the guys that have been supporting me, that are on the comment section, that are always liking, disagreeing, and everything. With respect, that's what we do. We are not here. Uh, remember, we are not enemies, bro African brothers and sisters. I don't mind when I see white people swearing at me and doing all those things on the comment section. It's okay. I understand. But with my African brothers and sisters, let's just have respect amongst each other and um, uh, respectfully disagree and agree with topics and points and try to educate each other as time goes. Because at the end of the day, we as Africans are all that we have. You understand what I'm saying? So until next time, please don't forget to pray and just know your boy King053, Mr. Easy Email Ning Ning salutes you. Thank you for tuning in. If you enjoy the content, leave your thoughts on the comment section and hit the like and subscribe button and we will meet on the next one.